Hello, Doctor Who fans and my fellow subscribers and Whovians. Welcome to my latest Doctor Who review, where today I review Doctor Who, The Seeds of Doom, which stars Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor and Elizabeth Sladen as Sarah Jane Smith. This would be the sixth and final serial of Doctor Who season 13, so it's a season finale. Woo! <laughs> and the plot of this story is as follows. When scientists in the Antarctic uncover a mysterious seed pod, the Doctor is called in to investigate. He soon realises it is an extraterrestrial and extremely dangerous being. At the same time, however, a ruthless millionaire plant lover, Harrison Chase, has learned of the find and decides he must have the pod for his collection of rare and beautiful flora. Meanwhile, the pod itself harbours intelligent life with sinister plans of its own. There we go, that's the essential premise of this story. So, uh, <clears throat> The Seeds of Doom, well, this is an interesting one. This is the, the last story of this season, and yeah, it's another very good one. This season has been very consistent, uh, bar one particular story in my opinion, but uh, I think this is a good finale. This is a much better season finale than the previous season, which had Revenge of the Cybermen as the finale, and thankfully we can we can put that one under the rug. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this would, this would actually be kind of the last story that would majorly involve Unit until the Sylvester McCoy era, so quite a long time before we'll see Unit again, but, and we don't sadly have any of the sort of regulars like Brigadier or Benton or Yates, that they're not in this story, but Unit are actually featured in the later half of this story. Um... I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was very good. It was a very thrilling <laughs> Doctor Who story, I must say. It was incredibly thrilling. And the villains are excellent in this story. The the, the Chronoids, or Crinoids, I don't know how you say it. It's spelled K-R-Y-N-O-I-D. I'm just calling them Crinoids. The, 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 the Crinoids are excellent. They're like these plant monsters. And when we see the, the, the people that have been infected by the pods mutate into um into the into the crinoids they're really quite you know spectacularly scary and um there are sequences where they're like throwing their leaves and plants around and sarah jane and everyone gets caught up in all of them and the doctor has to come in and spray something on them like some disinfectant or something to get them off and it's really quite thrilling i mean we begin the story in uh, in the antarctic of course and the doctor is called to investigate and those scenes are great i, I kind of wish we would have stayed longer in the Antarctic in this story. I think that would have been better. It would have been nice to have had most of the story there. I would have loved that, but nevertheless, it's still great. And like I said, I love the design of the monsters. The the the, the prosthetic makeup <laughs> as well is fantastic. When you see, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, I can't There's so many characters in this story. Who is it? Who is it? I think it's um, Morbley. Derek Morbley is um is infected and he's lying on his on his um, on his bed and all of the makeup is on his face and he's got a completely green outfit on and I mean obviously he's wearing an outfit but it's like his body is transforming we get to see every aspect of the transformation which is fantastic and it looks really good this this story has production values to the top it it could I mean it it, it this I mean I'm saying this glibly but it could almost be like, released theatrically, it looks this good. So, props to the production designer. I love the interior sets of the Antarctic base, which are really good. Um, there is a huge supporting cast in this story. A huge supporting cast. Um, obviously, the, the other villain of the story is Harrison Chase, who is played by Tony Beckley. He's a fantastic villain. And I really like his um, his kind of arrogance. He's got this real kind of arrogance he, he wants to be the guy that discovers this new plant being and he's he's he's, he's mad he's, he's he's just obsessed and when his friend um arnold keeler is is, is is mutating and transforming he doesn't give a shit about the guy he's like oh my god wow th this is amazing i mean you know this is this is part of the discovery i'm not i'm not gonna help you i'm oh wow like he he doesn't want to help him he he wants to use him for his own personal benefit and financial gain you know he's he's an arsehole <laughs> basically i think chase is a great villain and he gets definitely involved in the action a lot more as the story progresses which is fantastic uh also the character of scorby played by john chalice is really good he starts out as a kind of a, a thug sort of like a henchman to uh chase but he ends up siding with the doctor and sarah in the end which is good and he has a change of heart and his death is quite dramatic i must say he 
when he runs out of the house into the swamp or the the lake, and he gets eaten up by the by the um, the crinoid that's in the river, which is really scary. That's, that's quite that's quite dramatic, I must say. Um, other supporting characters like Sir Colin Thackeray, he's really good. Uh, played by Michael Barrington. Charles Burnett, played by John Gleeson, is very good. John Stevenson, played by Hubert Reese, is very good. I'm reading these off the off the wiki page, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Hargreaves is a, is a good one. I like Hargreaves, played by Seymour Green. Dr. Chester, played by Ian Fairbain, is good. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm reading loads of names, and in a way, that's kind of one of the issues I have with this story. There is a huge cast in this story, and I think there's too many people in this cast. At times, it gets a little bit overcrowded, I think, in terms of cast members. There is... This has this is like double the amount of cast than they normally have. I mean, this is a six-part story, so they have room for these characters, but there are times when it is kind of hard to keep up with every single character, and that's not including the Doctor and Sarah Jane, so... I think the cast was a bit overcrowded. I think you could have cut a few of these characters out. I know that a lot of them die anyway, so... But still, it's it, it would have been nice to reduce them a bit so we could follow it. Or, or so I could follow it a bit more. But that's just my own personal preference. Speaking of which, um, the Doctor. Tom Baker is, you know... He's delightful in this story. He, he never gives a bad performance. He's so good in this story. And, you know, he, there's a lot of times when he challenges Chase... They have a good fight as well. And actually, Tom Baker uses a gun in this story. Well, he never actually fires it, but he just holds it. I mean, there is this whole thing about the Doctor carrying guns, and it is is technically not really supposed to happen, but I'll let it go in this story, because he never fires the gun. He just he uses it as a prop, and he uses it to intimidate the others. But there are plenty of occasions when the Doctor is, 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 is threatened with a gun, <laughs> and so is Sarah Jane. Elizabeth Sladen, you know, once again, very good as Sarah Jane. I have no complaints with her. She is terrific, and I know we're not going to have her for much longer until, you know, uh, later on with the Five Doctors and then with the David Tennant stuff. But um, she's very good in this story. She's always good. Elizabeth Sladen, top notch. Um, I really like the setting of the um, the mansion where they where the final sort of throwdown takes place. And when Unit get involved in the story, that's really good. Although I do think Unit kind of get underutilized in this story. There's Considering that the Brigadier's not in it, and Benton's not in it, and even Yates isn't in it, there's not really much point having Unit in the story, other than for the final battle, of course, which is which is spectacular and big, and, and don't get me wrong, it's lovely to have them there, but they they kind of just throw Unit in there for, for no reason. <laughs> it does feel a bit like they don't have much involvement in the story other than that. I, I know that they wanted to kind of get away from Unit with, after John Pertwee left the role, but... I, I just feel like if you're going to have unit in there, you may as well have all of them. And I know that Nicholas Courtney wasn't available for this story, but it would have been great to at least have Nicholas Courtney back. So I think, you know, with with that reason, I think they should have just cut unit out of this story and should have just taken on the crinoids themselves. There, there, there was no reason to have a unit in there. And, and then in the end, they kind of just blast the whole thing anyway. They just blow up the house and <laughs> they just blow up the mansion. So I think the kind of ending is is just you know almost a little bit predictable the fact that they just blow the whole thing up you know without without much warning um yeah although it is pretty spectacular to see the the crinoid you know become huge and gigantic and have all its tentacles flapping around and trying to to hurt the doctor and sarah and uh, scorby and everyone in the house which is which is really good the final climax of the story is brilliant when they take on uh, chase when they when they when they fight him then that's that's really really good there's a lot of suspense in the earlier parts of the story as well when they're in the antarctic and the doctor is describing the crinoids and and what they're doing and and everything um it's it is a thrilling story and it's everything doctor who should be it really is but i do ha also have to say i do think the story is 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 a tiny bit too long i think having it as five parts would have been better because for me the fourth part of the story dragged a little bit um, there were still some good moments in it, don't get me wrong, but there was a long period where they were just talking. There's a lot of talking moments in this story, but there's also some thrilling moments. There's plenty of action to keep you going. It's just a minor nitpick. I just think the story is slightly too long. I think five parts would have been would have been great and would have sufficed perfectly. So, as you can see, <laughs> I, I really like this story. It is a fantastic story. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention. The music. The music in this story is fabulous. It is a fantastic soundtrack. Dudley Simpson, you've done it again. 
it really is one one of the best sounding episodes. Sorry, stories I should say because there's, there's six episodes. Um, it is really really good, and it's a great ending to this really good series. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. So I'm going to give this a nine out of ten. I can't give it a perfect score, sorry, I have a few nitpicks with it, but otherwise, this is a very good story, and definitely one that I can see why people love. Also, I have to mention, the person that voices the crinoid, Mark Jones, I mean, the voice is okay, but it's it's it doesn't stick out in my head very much. I don't remember it all that much, but it would be kind of nice to see the, the crinoids come back as well. Also, the earlier half of this story kind of has a vibe of, of the of, of the film The Thing. I know that the film The Thing actually came out after this story, but um, there is definitely a sort of vibe of that with the Antarctic and then the monster, and it, it does kind of feel like that. But yeah, so I, I have my, my, my view on, on the story, but generally speaking, it's very good. And just before I go on to my ranking, I will just say that the person who directed this story, Douglas Canfield, I mean, he's a fam very famous Doctor Who director. He directed loads of stories. He's done a great job at keeping this one going. I just think he could have tightened it up a bit. <laughs> it's a bit long for me, but otherwise, very good. Philip Hinchcliffe gets a mention as well for producing the story. And the writer... And the writer of this story is Robert Banks Stewart. And I'm not sure what else he's actually written for the show, but... The, the script is solid. I just think there's too many characters. I think you could cut a few of the characters out. But that being said, this is a great story. Okay, so we are at the end of season 13. So, on to the ranking. <laughs> now, uh, bearing in mind, this is just a personal preference. Again, I'm not saying you should rank them in this order. This is my own subjective list. So if we disagree, fine. But keep your comments polite. Otherwise, I'm going to delete them. So you have been warned. Uh, also, if you want my extensive thoughts on each story, then watch the reviews. Obviously, the Seeds of Doom. This is the review that I'm doing, so you would have you would have heard what I'm doing for that one anyway. But the other five stories, check the reviews out if you want my proper thoughts. I'm just going to list them like that because it's just easier that way. <laughs> and there's so many seasons of Doctor Who, so it's easier just to at the end of the season just to do rank them like that rather than do an entire ranking video. To me, it's just more convenient. Anyway, so season thirteen. Number six, Planet of Evil. Yeah, I know, predictable, but I, it was the only one I wasn't really keen on. Number five, sorry, The Seeds of Doom. It is a very good story, don't get me wrong, it is a really good story, but there are so many others. There, there are others in this season which I just, I just think are better. Number four, The Android Invasion. Number three, Terror of the Zygons. Number two, The Brain of Morbius. And number one, The Pyramids of Mars. It's a very tough one to rank because most of the stories are so good. <laughs> I mean, especially the top two that I've ranked, I, I think are very good. I do really like The Seeds of Doom, don't get me wrong, I really do like it, but I, it, to me it just has a few flaws that prevent it from being quite as good as some of the others. It's a very hard list to rank, but I take it over Planet of Evil because I, I couldn't really get into that one. So, that's really it for Season 13. It's a very good season. It's a very good season, and I think it's an improvement on Season 12, which was Tom Baker's first season. And it was a longer season as well, six stories instead of five. But um, next time... We move on to the Mask of the Mandragora. Mandragora. I think that's how you say it. The Mask of the Mandragora. Yeah, that's it. And that is going to be the first story in season 14. And yeah, I look forward to that. So stay tuned for my review of the Mask of the Mandragora. Until next time, I am Mr. Thomas 11. See you soon.